This is Doyle, a middle-aged man who lost his wife and his career. Once known as the pioneer of justice and inspector of courage, is drinking and getting wasted inside a bar. You might be asking yourself, how did he end up like this? Well, let me explain. This story is a narrative brimming with a myriad of emotional highs and lows. A captivating rollercoaster ride of feelings, a story about overcoming despair and not giving up on hope. I ask you to bring tissues because this story will make you laugh, cry and emotionally damaged. But trust me, it will all be worth it. In East Side District, we have problems as usual. Rumors spread like wildfire, corruptors and sleepwalkers who spit out black goo, you know the drill. Chief is appointed to solve the problem, and with the help of our daughters, Hecate and Hela, they embark to find Doyle. According to the Ninth Agency, Doyle has a stellar reputation for being a very hardworking, upright and reliable informant. Through sheer coincidence, you arrive at the party hosted by Irene, the president of Quinn, and the owner of Midsummer Nightclub where you meet this gaudy woman serpent and she gives you a sweet drink named Dreamy Ambrosia, which is getting very popular among Eastsiders. Are you unhappy? Hmm. My apologies. I didn't prepare well enough for this rehearsal. But how can I hold back when I see someone so adorable? When the real show starts, I'll make it up to you properly. You have a bad feeling, so you decide to investigate further, only to arrive at a shady bar trying to find Detective Doyle. Look and behold, first impressions were not quite going according to plan. You find him in the middle of trash bins, drunk, confused, vomiting and not even recognizing you, the employee. Suddenly attacked by sleepwalkers and together you fight them off and help sober him up. Eastsiders hate sinners, so you can't just bring them everywhere, they must always keep a low profile. her run around again chief please keep a close watch on your belongings next time if anything happens call me and i will be there right away well at least hecate is trying gandal is a doctor and friend of doyle probably the last person who still believes in doyle doyle might look like a deadbeat husband and well i wouldn't blame you but deep inside he has been working non-stop to stop tragedies and prevent further harm to the innocent even though he's hated by the people once Doyle finishes puking up on the toilet, the two of you go find some clues only to arrive at a fancy bar due to another mania outbreak. Hella, remain undercover. Don't expose yourself. Huh? Remain undercover? We're already fighting in the middle of the f***ing street! You can feel the presence of under sinner inside, so you venture in. There you meet Ruleka and Mess, making a mess. What a poetic encounter. Mess is giving people ambrosia, the sweet, super sweet drinks that supposedly helps you forget pain. The chief unleashes her shackles on Ruleka, only to be dragged inside her dream world. You get pulled into Ruleka's dream. It's a world created by her subconscious mind. Ambrosia materialized the happiness she longed for and cast all the painful memories out of this dream into reality. Ruleka enjoying a sweet summer holiday with her sharp, plushy and super cool sunglasses. Daddy Clover is a giga chat, coolest dad ever. He out of all people wishes the most for Ruleka's happiness, even if it means making her feel pain to save her from this fake reality. He explains to you, Ruleka's dream. It's a fake mirage world created by her subconscious mind. Everything here is fake. The things she most cherished, desired, the love she lost in her real life, the pains she had to go through, none of it is happening here. Instead of suffering, She's being supported by her dear family, the Four Leaf Clovers. Ambrosia used Ruleka's longing for her family to create this doting hallucination to restrain and imprison her in a frozen past. Here, Ruleka is the rule. You can't use your strange power. If you go too far, you will be rejected by Ruleka. The dream will obey her subconscious and expel you back to reality. Chief, you must awaken her. Make her understand that this is all fake so that she can no longer get joy from it. Make her remember that she is a sinner and not just a normal girl. Reality is depressing, but that's the only way to face the future head on. When she no longer relies on Ambrosia, Ambrosia will stop attaining her happiness and the dream will collapse. Ruleka will be able to escape the sleepwalker's curse and cease to cause trouble for the real world. 
as a not puking black goo which transforms into corruptors. Daddy Clover has been trying forever to save Ruleka, but if he is forced to say anything that makes his dearest Ruleka cry, his mouth will rot away before the words come out. He tried many things, but none of them succeeded. Sadly, he is not able to destroy this world for her. Ruleka likes you very much, Chief, and made a promise. As long as you win the diamond medal in the next volleyball games, you can make a wish for Ruleka and make her leave. Of course, she doesn't want that. So, she, so to her best of abilities, she refuses to lose. Daughter of four leaf clovers, win fairly and lose graciously is a rule to live by. She never wished for her sinner's powers. She never wanted to get luck in exchange for her father and the clovers. She doesn't want to be alone. She doesn't want to be lonely. She lost everything once. She refuses to experience it twice. Even so, you must destroy her happiness, chief. You want my family? Where are you going to take them? What are you going to do to them? After all these matches, you finally manage to reach Ruleka, and man, is it a heart-wrenching ending, ending where she finally faced the truth. You villain. You devil. You big bad brute. You're just like those evil gangsters. You took everything Ruleka had. I won't forgive you. I'll have my revenge. Just you wait. One day, your wish already came true. You took away my family for the second time. This is the birthday gift promised to you, Ruleka. Your father kept his promise and gave you this revolver. Do you recall what happened that day? No, no. I don't want to. I don't want this kind of luck. I don't want luck in exchange for daddy and everyone else. I just want you guys. Don't leave me. Wake up, Ruleka. This isn't your world. Your real father is no longer with you. And played volleyball together. Did you have fun, Ruleka? Why are you on her side? Daddy is always on Ruleka's side. Then why do you want Ruleka to wake up? You know I'd be heartbroken. You know I just want to stay and be with all of you, yet you... Damn it! It's just Ambrosia, isn't it? I'll find Mess. She has a lot of it. She'll give it to me. I'll be back. I'll be back no matter how many times it takes. Next time, I'll create my real daddy. A daddy who will never betray Rilekka. I won't let you guys crush my dreams again. It'll be the same, Rilekka. Ambrosia will never change my resolve. As long as you still miss your real father, the father you create will try to wake you up every time, no matter what it takes. You're lying! My real daddy wouldn't push me away! My real daddy wouldn't make me cry! You're a fake! You're just a four-leaf clover! You're not my real daddy! You're right, I'm just a hallucination, but I know his heart better than anyone else. The truth of Ambrosia, the truth of her dream world, the sad reality where her family is no more, in the final moments her father says goodbye. <laughs> Yes, he wants that. I'm sorry, Ruleka. I'm not your real father. I'm sorry for not being able to watch you grow up. You liar! 
let go. You're not my daddy. No. No. Don't go. Don't leave me. Come back. I beg you. Daddy. Hecate barges in, pummels mess to the ground and saves Yuchi from the bar. What a day. You wake up sad and a bit lonely in Doyle's house, contemplating what just happened, only to be greeted by Nightingale, who explains to Hecate's heroic efforts to save you, Chief. Hecate emerges from the kitchen and hands you a warm drink. Hecate. Hecate is the best daughter. Heartwarmed, you let go any you let go of any negative emotions. Doyle taught her a special hangover drink. It's his wife's secret recipe. You okay, old man? You lost the argument with me? Now your legs are failing too. You agree that the loser has to call the winner daddy. Come on. Call me daddy. I'm your daddy. I love Hella Man. Doyle and Hella have such a good chemistry going between them. It's hilarious. Mess is a finicky supplier. She always changes her base so tracking her down is tricky, but Doyle managed to find where she currently resides, so the four of you waste no time and go after her. While on the way, Doyle reveals to you his broken marriage, how he messed up back in the day he used to have someone he could rely on, his dear wife, but he yelled at her, neglected her, all he did was when he got home he lost his temper, he broke promises and made her life terrible. Even on the day she left, he couldn't muster up a decent apology. Even after all this time, he knows she was right. It was the best for both of them, but he still misses her. His gaze changes from despair to conviction. Doyle is so cool. He doesn't make excuses, he screwed up and he's going to own up to it. Even with everything, he keeps doing the only thing he's good at, being a good inspector. Are you proud of that monologue? Ugh. Who's the one moaning on and on about his wife every time he drinks? So embarrassing. Aren't you too old to act like some lovesick teenager? I'm gonna retch. <coughs> <laughs> Kids should shut up when the adults are talking. Good. Wait, wait, hold on, I've got a message. Interrupted by a phone call, Doyle gets a message that his ex-wife got attacked, so he rushes to the ICU to check up on her. Obviously, that's a scam orchestrated by the Knight Agency. His love isn't hurt, we just needed to get rid of him or to get him off this case because it's too dangerous for non-sinners. You follow Mess into an abandoned building. Mess the spirit forger. She extracts malice from people's hearts to forge weapons. The evil thoughts of hurting others will become the power of her sword. So basically a dark magic blacksmith, dark blacksmithian. A fight erupts and you start to question her about Ambrosia, only to find out that she needs the precious black goo, for her it's like the most valuable material. Her goal is to collect it and create Excalibur, the sacred sword, the weapon to defeat the greatest monster, Malice. She wants to protect mankind, humanity. Mess, are you an anti-hero? Mess is trying to prevent the destruction of the world by some monster nobody heard of. Mess, what kind of delusion did you bring yourself into? Even Hecate and Hela are speechless. Turns out the evil monster she's speaking of is from a video game EMP likes to play. You trick Mess into inhaling the mist from Ambrosia, sending you both, both into her dream world. <laughs> you idiot! By doing this, you can't run away either. You are then greeted by the dragon Mess dreams about. It's a pixelated dragon. You swing at him once and he dies. Yeah, that's the big bad evil. Every time you beat him up, the game resets. Mess, what kind of stuff are you dreaming about? Hero appears, you steal his job and arrive at the beginner's village where you meet Mess. Mess, you silly goose. It's a cute village where she roleplays a blacksmith who creates a sacred sword that will save the world. She creates a sword, gives it to the hero and he embarks on a journey to say Draco the dragon. Rinse and repeat. It's honestly a very cute dream, Mess. But since you are the chief of MBCC, your job is to save her from this fake world. Like you decided to destroy Ruleka's happiness, you are about to do the same to Mess by breaking her precious sacred sword. Another one for you. Wait here. <laughs> 
You do this repeatedly until you break her mind. Not only do you make her use up all the materials, you also convince her to join you on this adventure to Draco. Well, you forcefully convince her. In front of the almighty beast, you break her sacred sword one last time. You slap Draco and Mess undergoes a mental crisis, where she starts to see the truth and so her dream world crumbles. In the final moments, she understood she needs no hero. It has always been her against the world, fighting alone as the anti-hero. She clutches her hammer and finishes Draco all by herself. You go girl, that's my mess. <laughs> all of a sudden didn't you just lie to me bully me and attack me for your own motives i still remember how much you tricked me in the dream so you didn't bully me on purpose i thought you were a wolf in sheep's clothing i wanted to uncover your evil intentions but you turned out to be a goody two-shoes how disappointing before the world falls apart the two of you exchange some sweet cute banter you wake up inside an MBCC rescue vehicle parked near Mess's base. Mess is in critical condition due to ambrosia, like Ruleka, so they have been both sent to the MBCC. The ninth agency found out that a suspicious woman called Serpent is probably behind all of this. She's a freelance entertainer and a circus performer who is very famous in East Side's high class salons. She signed a contract with Irene's organization where she performs regularly. Serpent has in the meantime targeted Doyle and got him to drink Ambrosia. Now Doyle is sleepwalking. Huge mania crisis is broken out at Irene's club. A gigantic snake is seen hugging the entire building. Nightingale relates to that the M value is on the same level as a S rank sinner. Chief, it's about to go down. The mist of Ambrosia engulfed the entire place. Large scale contamination and M value fluctuations. Chief, you might be the only person who can stop this disaster. Behind the spacious desk is Irene, president of Quinn, and she's leaning back against her chair, sleeping soundly. Half the glass of ambrosia sits on her desk, and beneath it lies a note with a small, cute snake symbol. Serpent is hiding inside Irene's dream. With no hesitation, Chief gives Irene an indirect kiss. Indirect kiss. Chief got down the remaining ambrosia, falling asleep and waking up inside her dream. What do you want, Chief? Of Minos, she asks. Sadly, the chief answers Serpent, which really saddens Irene. Irene wants Chief's love and attention, but to no avail. Chief is on a mission to track down Serpent and solve the mania crisis. Chief is here to work. This makes Irene very unhappy. Irene will not play along and wants Chief to satisfy her, otherwise she will not sell out Serpent. Irene is not weak. She's an S-rank sinner. Serpent isn't holding her hostage. This is not a case like Rulekas or Messes. To get out of this problem, Chief decided to entertain her a bit. After fulfilling her demands, she gives you a smirk and tells you to quickly solve this issue so you can return to her arms. She points towards a place where Serpent is located. Before leaving, she claims all of you will be hers. Inside Doyle's dream, you wake up in his house and his wife greets you. The kind, gentle and sweet Nasha. It's a lovely dream, a fake reality where she didn't leave him, where he didn't mess up. The future which he can't reclaim, a future long gone, a distant past which can't be saved. You tell him the truth, but he refuses to accept it. He knows it's all fake, but even so, he doesn't want to lose her again. This dream is simply too comfortable. After all these years, he finally got to see Nasha again, even though she's not real. Nothing is here. You failed to bring him back to reality. This is real. This is the most important thing in the world to me. I'll never let go. Work. The case. They're nothing compared to her. I won't make the wrong choice again. Ta-da! I am Serpent, the circus performer of dreams. My greatest joy is bringing joy to everyone. You there. The frowning lady in the audience. Yes, you. Aw, don't be such a killjoy. Serpent invites you on stage. I love Serpent. She's adorable and cute as heck. Funny and bright. If Serpent wants me to gulp down Ambrosia, I would do it in a heartbeat. But you are the chief of MBCC. Chief resists. 
Serpent has been using Marv, the thing that creates a black ring, to create her juices, Ambrosia. Serpent is all about happy things. She hates sadness and despair. She fights suffering using very unorthodox methods. Sadly, the way of solving these issues is a bit wild. Serpent, the misunderstood hero. Here we go again. I know you are the best talker. Rueka, this place can only mimic your past, but it can't create your future. This isn't your life. Come back to reality. Blah, blah, blah. Mess, this isn't the enemy you want. It devalues your fight's worth. You can't forge a truly powerful secret sword here. Come back to reality. Blah, blah, blah. Irene, this only gives you the illusion of a mighty foe. It can't produce anything other than your own reflection. Opponents who can truly surpass you are in the vaster real world. Blah, blah, blah. Dreams are just cages for all your consciousness, trapping you guys in narrow fantasies and depriving you of greater possibilities. Come back to reality. Come back. <laughs> With just a few words, you lure people out of the beautiful dreams I crafted for them. You encourage them to discard their happiness and return to their worst miseries. Aren't you the most bewitching little trickster? I want to really emphasize that Serpent is freaking strong, truly an s rank sinner because she managed at a very young age beat up and scare the living shit out of Marv, the corpus thingy we had a massive problem dealing with in the Zoya and Rustfire arcs, Serpent single-handedly tamed Marv. You cross this boundary, you shall die too. <laughs> but too bad it's so weak. Not only did it fail to eat me, but also got a good whipping for me. It never dared to challenge me again. Now it's an obedient little servant of mine. Ambrosia is the bottle of dreams, which is produced by Marv's heart. Marv loves to devour the joy in people's heart. See, everyone needs sweet dreams. Everyone needs happiness. I want to make everyone happy. She teased you and tortured you. She unleashed the monster she raised to filter your consciousness and let the black goo shake your will. You are through roughly exhausted from all her tricks. But in the end, she came to protect you. Even though you are enemies, even though the two of you stand on opposite sides, she can't bear to see you get her chief. Not everything Serpent did was bad. On the other hand, you see a golden picture, you see joyous scenes, long lost passions, far away dreams, rekindled friendships. Don't force everyone to go back to reality. Don't ruin these joyful scenes. If you're so worried about them, why don't I bring them in here right now? That's because they haven't experienced the sweet dreams I can give them. Yes, what Ambrosia brings to everyone is flawless joy, a true paradise. Too bad you can't experience it, but that's okay. What Ambrosia can't give you, I will. If you fear waking up to pain and suffering, I can give never-ending dreams. If you worry about someone getting hurt in the real world, I can bring everyone here. Stay here and embrace me. I will give you happiness here. Serpent wants you to stay and embrace her. She will give you happiness. She hugs you, her body is thin and her skin is cold. She's like a lonely night travel, longing for warmth and light. Chief was about to give in, but seeing the golden light made her remember. Your dear wife Nightingale must be worried sick. Your daughters Hela and Hekate must be anxiously waiting for your return. Your sinners at the MBCC, what would they do without you, Chief? It's time to stop, Serpent. Game's over. The real world is tough, but not everyone hates it as much as you do. Meanwhile, inside Doyle's dream, he's having moments of hesitation. The television is playing the truth. Nasha is encouraging him. Through hell or high water, Doyle does not want to let go, but slowly and slowly he starts to crack. Nasha sees through the excuses. She knows she isn't real. She knows she needs to help Doyle to see the truth. No matter how difficult it is facing reality, one must not look away. No matter how sad it is, Doyle, you need to face it. Doyle breaks down crying and finally remembers the cruel truth, the reality. Not this sunny, 
happy Nasha. Here, have this hangover drink. The incredible inspector must head off with a clear mind. Go, and don't worry. I'll always be here. And I'll always love you. But the real Nasha, the day she left him. Doyle, I'm sorry. Let's break up. I can't take it anymore. Why are you crying? There, there. I'm here. I'll always be here. Go now. I'll make you something yummy again when you're back. All right. I'm leaving. I love you. Doyle charges towards the truth. Serpent tries to stop Doyle from leaving, but it's futile. Doyle has decided to embrace reality. Serpent is having a mental breakdown because she struggles to understand why they would leave the dream, the happiness behind. The moment Serpent lets her guard down, he quickly go and destroy Marv, ending the dreams across the east side. The peak of the M value is falling rapidly. The scope of mania contamination has shrunk, and some of the sleepwalkers have regained consciousness. Alert the whole task force to seize this opportunity and counterattack. The shackles are reacting. Hala Chief is back. She's in the banquet room. What the heck took you so long? Go, go, go! I still need to. Ah! Huh? Doyle? How come you're here? Get up! I knew this is how it would end. You can't win against her, little snake. I didn't expect it to end like this. You crashed my performance, ruined the sweet dreams, and drove everyone back to the miserable real world. You used all your might to destroy my last shred of joy. How could I hurt you all? I wanted to give happiness to all of you. If I could heal your pain, make you happy, and bring you into a beautiful dream, even just once, you would definitely choose me. If only you would choose me. Next time, I will bring you a real sweet dream. Goodbye. Hello? Hey, you little brat. It took you this long to call me? I, 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 I'm on vacation, so I'm not writing any reports or working overtime. Let's talk about something else. When are you coming to the east side again? Uh, whether you're here for work or fun, stop by the house for dinner. I've uh, actually learned how to make the hangover drink properly now.
Well, I'm still a grouchy old man, but I'm very happy now. Path to Nowhere is so freaking amazing. Dreamy Bubble is one of the best events I have ever played in my life. It was, I can't believe it's it's a side story. It's an event story. It's not even the main story. Like the story is so immersive. I was crying. I was laughing. I was smiling. I was crying again. It's full of emotional ups and downs. If you have missed the initial run, don't worry. Ice Snow has got you covered. It's going to have a rerun very soon. So that's exciting news. The Path to Nowhere first anniversary was so much fun to watch. Uh, did you guys see it? It, it came like um, Friday, Sunday, right? Sunday, I believe. It felt like a laugh letter to the community. Like, how can we not love them? I know I love you. Thank you for creating this masterpiece. I, I'm so happy. And hopefully, you know, hopefully we get to see a second anniversary. And I'm so hyped. I'm so freaking hyped. If you haven't seen it yet, guys, go check it out now. It's on the official YouTube account. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful week and hopefully I'll get to see you next time too. Autumn signing out.